We have uh, Ben on the line. The meeting's recorded. Who wants to go first? Anyone want to bring anything to anyone's attention? Jeff, do you want to bring anything up? So Maximus is our first order. Yeah, why don't, why don't we just go through that? Yeah. I've looked this over, um, although I'm missing Exhibit A. So this is this is related to uh, domestic relations, right? Yes. yes. This is the full agreement. Okay. And this is for Maximus to uh, basically do some accounting and coordination with uh, domestic relations and, and other areas of the government to basically consult in order to find savings and then also account do accounting for them. Um, <coughs> just because this was something that was brought up in an audit of domestic relations. They had their, whatever it was, 10-year audit this, this year. And they, the state was basically um, had a couple of things that they wanted them to change, but one of them was that they wanted them to utilize Maximus in order to uh, basically see how they're billing for everything, how they're um, recouping their funds, and how they interact with all the other agencies of the government. Um, because there's a lot of things that they do um, that's integrated, and as a result, uh, they're missing capturing dollars that they could be accruing from different parts of the government um, as a result of the work that they do. And this organization is the recommended organization by the state, uh, which is curious to me. Well, my reason for asking for Exhibit A, which I was missing, is because it gives the definition and description of their service, and it says development of a central services cost allocation plan uh, identifies the various costs incurred by the client, which is Warren County, to support and administer federal and state programs. Plans will contain a determination of an allowable cost of providing each supporting service, such as purchasing, legal counsel, disbursement, processing, etc. Um, <clears throat> the plans will be based upon the client's actual fiscal and statistical data for the calendar years 2016 and the agreement uh, that we're looking at here can be extended to include calendar year 2017 um, and or 2018. So that's, that's the skinny on what they do. And uh, this, the agreement would be at a dollar figure of $7,500. To, for their consultation and services. Yeah, I think that's the thing that I had a question about was that I was under the impression that some portion of that could be reimbursed by the state, that we would get state funding for it. But I don't, I, I, I don't know that we ever got clarity on that. Because if it's, if it's a situation where the state will pay for it, then I'll happily sign. If, uh, if we have to pay for it, then, then but I mean, even then, I think that they're kind of requiring domestic relations to have it. So then there would be a conversation about how we, how we would accommodate that. Yeah, I don't see anywhere in here. That yeah, it's too bad we did. We should have we could ask Judy to come down and talk about it because mm -hmm. she's kind of coordinating the whole situation. Well, this is something that we can talk to Judy and get a little more details before we. Um, bring this up at our our meeting. Ben, are you still alive? Yeah, I can't say more than a few words without coughing, but yes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the Maximus, <coughs> the Maximus thing sounded like it was going to, at least for the first couple of years, save us money um, because it's likely to identify things that we're not allocating. Properly, yeah. Do you know if it's reimbursed by the state? The fee? I do not believe it is reimbursed by the state. Okay. But again, the idea would be that they'll identify things that we are not currently 
getting reimbursed by the state. Right, and I guess, yeah, why would they reimburse us when they're making it a requirement that we yeah. do this? So, yeah, makes sense. All right, I don't have any further questions, and any that I have, I guess I'll ask um, Judy or uh, Judy or Judy. Uh, when I spoke with Judy on, when we were talking about some 911 funding, that was one of the things that she spoke on this program. Like, because we do 911, we do on a call for the uh, probation and, and all of them that, you know, we're not showing that as a cost to that department, you know, on that type of deal. Mm -hmm. Showing that, you know, if hopefully down the road 911 funding increases, we can show that, you know, part of Brian Bull's wages for doing 911 addressing, we can charge back to 911. It's not something that we can do right at the time because we don't, we're not fully funded under 911, but hopefully in the future maybe the legislation changes a little bit. But I know that was one of the things with that program that will show that, you know. Okay. Thanks, Todd. I was trying to move out of one one person here and block the other, so. <laughs> uh, so I'll go down the list of my stuff. Um, the, the advertisement for the engineer was placed in the paper. Um, we currently on the website have a, uh, have a big link at the top of the page that goes to the, the RFP or the RFQ for um, engineering services. That's going to run for a couple of weeks, and then we will have at a work session. We'll open the documents related to the engineer, and then uh, you know review that and pick somebody. And then uh, as soon as that happens, we'll start moving um, a bit faster on some of the other um, maintenance and capital projects um, within the courthouse. Uh, let's see. Um, I'll just go down to the recycling bit. We took a trip. Um, ben Catherlin, uh, Dan Glotz, myself, and um, Heather Wilcox. Thank you. Uh, from the Conservation District, took a trip down to Elk County to visit their recycling center, and um, was very impressed with it. Um, they their setup is is a little bit different than ours um, because they have the center and because they because of some of the things that the setup of the county is a little bit different with uh, how everything's situated but essentially they, they purchased an old factory that was uh, that that made wood did it, didn't it make like wood pellets or something Ben it, like it was they were chipping wood there Something like that. Something like that. Anyway, it was this big warehouse, exactly like our warehouse. They had it divided up. Um, the the equipment that they had, most of it was purchased through grant funding. Um, and I, I have to check my notes as to what grant it was. Where did they have it? 902 grant funding. And, and something's being done with the 902 grant funding where the, that whole program is being um, relaunched or redone. So it's hard to say how that'll exist going forward. Um, but I know there's a lot of push to, to update it and to provide more opportunities there. Um, they, did, they did a lot of different stuff. The only thing they didn't deal with really was glass, but they did um, plastics, cardboard, aluminum, batteries, paint, hazardous household uh, materials, everything. And, and it was very well-run facility. It was very clean. Everything was very organized. Um, they, they were nice enough to provide us with all of their budget information for the past couple of years so that we could see how the numbers shake out as far as like what money they get from the recycling, what their expenses are, um, how their system is set up. They, their system uh, revolved a lot around um, volunteer labor. They had um, two full-timers and a part-timer, I believe. Um, but it was incredibly efficient setup. I took a bunch of pictures of the place. Um, it's my intention to take a trip down there and actually work at the facility for a day um, in order to get a, a clear picture of how they work, how the assembly line works. The day that we went, they were, uh, it was 
they weren't officially open, so they were just giving us a tour of all of the facilities and stuff. They didn't have the workers there utilizing the facility. But um, they're, they're pretty much solvent. Um, their startup costs were the, the core cost of the facility. Um, and, and like I said, a good chunk of those, all of the capital investments were made through grant funds. Um, so we're still trying to get more information from Elk County as to what the, their startup costs were. Um, how they went after it. They had they they gave us they were nice enough to give us a, a view of a, they had kept clippings newspaper clippings for the entire process of building the facility. I hope to get uh, kind of scan versions of all that to go through that as well. But um, I, I saw a lot of opportunities as far as things that Warren County could do that they aren't doing, um, partially because of the placement of the facility in Elk County. Um, ours is ours would be. Better, better placed, and and there's a lot more opportunities for getting other, I think, um, organizations and other uh, work solutions in there in order to mitigate costs of operation. So, um, really productive trip. A lot of really good information. Um, really looking forward to continuing to work with Van Glotz and our um, and our. Uh, consultant and, and a number of other organizations to try to kind of keep moving forward on this this you know, kind of vision for recycling and, and, to, and to get finished this solid waste plan as well. Um, as far as the internship program goes, I think I reported on that last week that, uh, that I had met with uh, several department heads to put that program together. Ben conducted an interview um, this past week with somebody who, uh, interested in interning with the county, which uh, I didn't, I met the person, I wasn't able to attend the meeting because I was pretty ill <laughs> at the time, <laughs> didn't want to, what it was 100%, but uh, um, that's something that we want to move forward on pretty quick. But I think that's it for me. I'll, I'll uh, I will see my time. How do they fund the recycling center and how do they keep it? Um, what, what are their financial situation like? Do they uh, bill the taxpayer for, to keep this running, or what do they do? They they're basically solvent through the recycling itself. So some okay. portion of the materials uh, pull in a lot of money. Some portion of them are huge uh, drains on the system, and so their volume <coughs> in, in, this, in the span of a few years had had uh, expanded pretty quickly. I mean, they, the, the amounts that they were recycling was just increasing every year over the past few years. They just moved to a new facility, so their ability to take more and different kinds of materials in was, uh, um, was, uh, was what allowed them to kind of like increase their volume. Um, the other thing that's important to remember is they take they have uh, agreements with all of their, with all the municipalities that do recycling, and, and the municipalities bring the recycling to their center, and then it's pulled from the center rather than each municipality having their own individual contract with a, with an agency. So, so as a result, their volume is pretty massive, so they can work better deals with individual um, or organizations to, uh, to pull funds from or to get funds out of the recycling. I think that we, I wanted to get, one of the things I want to get are the numbers from the county itself to, you know, to know definitively where their cost allocations are. I'm assuming that, that the salaries of the two full-timers that they have there are, are funded through the county or that that's not, you know, because everybody, everybody sits down and says, oh, we're solvent or we're break even, but I think that the, the way their wages were were funded by the county through the... If you looked at their um, budget, Jeff, it was pretty much a wash when it came to the physical location, um, and I believe the part-timers, but that was the only wage that was on there. The conservation district, I believe, was the funded half of the salaries of the full-timers and the county funded the other half of the full-timers. So you're right to say that it was solvent, not including the full-time employees. Yep. Yeah. 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 And so the, I, I think the thing, there's a lot of things to kind of evaluate with it, whether it be um, 
you know, the cost of the individuals, what, you know, working with municipalities to see what the best scenario is to, to function so that they save money. You know, I mean, I think that the, the goal would be to have a facility, if we were going to do it, that would break as even as you possibly could or get, you know, have as, as little cost as possible and still operate. I was really surprised with the amount of money that they pulled in for the recycling. I mean, I know that the recycling market's taken a huge hit because of the low cost of oil and the low cost of, uh, um, you know, all of you know, plastic. Steel. And metal, yeah. And, and metal, you know, the, 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 the tanking of the, the steel market and everything else has made recycling very, uh, not, not pull in the money that it used to, but they still, uh, pulled in quite a bit. I was really surprised. So that'll be a part of the consideration, I would think. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Ben. Uh, I don't really want to talk much. I, I think I'll just say, remind everyone that we're speaking on the 17th at 7:30 for the High Ed's event at the Conewango Club. Um, and then the other thing is that the governor. I'm not sure if you saw this because I think it happened while we were in our last meeting, but the governor just um, announced us in a uh, disaster state of emergency <clears throat> in preparation for uh, the coming storm. Todd, do you know what, does that mean anything to Warren County? Not really, man. I mean, that was one of the things I was just going to kind of bring up. That we're, they're showing a, the chances, of, the, the greatest chance that we're going to get is Probably about 11 inches of snow. The National Weather Service is, you know, it's about a 90% chance of at least two inches of snow, and it's a 10% chance of having greater than a foot of snow. But they're looking at, it's about a, they're estimating us about 11 inches. But they're also, it's a 90% chance they're going to get 12 inches of snow in Harrisburg and, and Lancaster, and that's a disaster for them. They're not, they're not prepared for that kind of. You know, they're preparing for it now, but so that, that, that's going to put that part of the state in a disaster where, you know, on the western side, you know, 11 inches of snow is, is just a, a snowfall that we get sometimes. Right. That's no big deal to us, but I think, at least what I was reading in one article, was that they'll actually be taking resources from this side of the state and reallocating them to the eastern side of the state, at least for a period of time. Yes. Yes, some state equipment will get moved, but you know, we have But not like our regional assets? No, no, nothing, okay. nothing like that. Okay, very good. All right, I'll open it up to our employees. Ed, do you have anything? Uh, I was requested to be at that uh, breakfast dinner that you're having Friday, so I will be there. Hmm. Todd? The only thing I have is just, I, I brought it up, and I think, I don't know, pampered in the packet to the Intergovernmental Cooperative Agreement of, you know, uh, I just want to make sure there wasn't any questions that I stand to put on the agenda for your meeting uh, from Wednesday. Okay. Uh, it, it really also is doing is just changing the name of it from, you know, from the telecommunications project to the next gen 911. So it's, it's really, uh, I did have John Tree look at it and saw no issues with it. I uh, know both Elk and Jefferson County solicitors have looked at it, and it's, it's just going to save us money. Okay. Uh, the only other thing that I have is, is, is part of this, our regional CAD project uh, with the 10 counties has gone out for an RFP. Okay. So I would ask that the commissioners do not talk to uh, Logistics, New World, or Sunbird. Those are the three that are expressed an enormous amount of interest, so now that we're out for RFP, uh, I know you guys have been looking at some other, looking at New World for a total package maybe, so if you do speak with them, you know, refrain from saying that, hey, since we're maybe getting the cab, you should give us a better price, because that's, you know, like I said, they're out. It's, it's gone out, it went out for RFP uh, Thursday, so it's out. Okay. Short turnaround. Um, I know that they are the vendor walkthrough is um, 
starts next Monday because they got to go. They got to see all ten counties, so it starts next Monday. I think ours is on Tuesday, so or starts Tuesday. Starts Tuesday. It goes through Wednesday, and Thursday. So um, all right. that's all I have. Phil, I was just curious on the what put the ad in the paper for the engineer. Mm -hmm. That was a huge ad. Now, is that mandatory and everything has to be listed in that text, or can you provide the link in that posting in the paper for the website? Or do you have to have it word by word in that ad? I didn't think it was that big. It had, it a, link, it had a link in it Yeah. Was it for the website. I mean, the actual RFP is like... I just read the paper every week and I saw this huge thing. I thought that was it. Maybe not. I thought that's what we had talked about, that we would have, you know, the link and maybe just refer yeah. to it. Okay. It did. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I didn't oh, see that. I thought maybe it was that huge one, that quarter, quarter of the papers. Yeah. We'll go review it. I'll see. Here's the Okay. And we have a guest here. Dan. Hi. Hi, Dan. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, thanks. I'm Mr. Rappersmith. Um, if I could just address uh, with you uh, folks just for a moment about redevelopment and tourism and all those things that uh, are in that package. The other night, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, I sat through a meeting uh, that the city hosted, and and about halfway through it, I went, oh my God, deja vu, and 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 deja vu it was. What was happening in that particular round table or whatever you want to call it, which was one of many. Um, was the same thing that happened 12 years ago uh, under Mr. Don T. Ioni. And, and, and the deja vu part came in that the, the same things were being discussed, the same responses from the participants, and, and it was just like, wow. The city could have saved themselves a lot of money and come and had you guys make them a copy of, of this report. And, uh, and, and, and that's not totally fair to say because perhaps uh, he's uh, uh, the new uh, consulting firm is looking mainly in the downtown area, and he might come up with some different uh, uh, thoughts. But the interesting thing about this report was uh, it was basically put in the trash can the evening it was presented, and not too many people have looked at it or read it uh, recently. Uh, in fact, I just spoke to someone out in the hallway who should be looking at this. And he said, well, he briefed through it a few years ago and, and, uh, and then put it back on his shelf and stuff. And I just, I find that a real conundrum as to why that would happen. And, and I, I briefed back through the report a couple times and, and uh, there are certainly some things in here that we could be aiming for and doing. And, and, uh, and yet we continually try to reinvent the wheel. And uh, in that same regard was... Uh, uh, the branding that came up uh, in the video that was presented there were videos. And, and had we been, anyone been paying attention closely, one of the things the gentleman spoke about was that you need to have something of, of numbers in order to brand. And that means that you, you know, if you want to be the antique capital of Northwest Pennsylvania, then we needed 10 or 12 antique stores or what have you. And so in seeing that very first step in branding, I thought, well, we're not quite ready for prime time. And uh, that evening, that very evening, someone wanted to have a consensus right then and there. Well, let's have a consensus on what we're going to brand, brand our county to be. And I looked around the room and I realized there were a lot of important people missing from the conversation. And one of them was Jim Decker, whom I, I, I spoke with uh, afterwards. And the reason he stepped away from it was because he had the same belief that I did that we weren't quite ready for prime time when it came to branding, and we could brand all we want, but at, at the end of the day, it's not going to get us anywhere. Um, and again, if we go back to this report, it does address a little bit of that, uh, 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 and things that we could be doing. It, it identifies our strengths and our weaknesses, and some of the things we could be doing to, to get ourselves to a point that we would have something to brand. But, Instead, this $10,000 report, which the county paid for, ended up in the, in the trash can, basically. And, and that back in the branding thing, because I'm very realistic, I'm gr uh, very grounded in, in all these things, and all the things that I do, I get branded as being negative. 
And so then I got ostracized from the group because I want everything to be something that we can actually uh, work from and, and grow from. And I see in my 15 or 12 or 15 years back home that we constantly ignore the advice of experienced professionals as if we somehow know better. And it always plays itself out over and over and over. And I, I, I just don't understand how we expect to get anywhere. If, if, if we're basically right where we were 12 years ago. And it's, it's just a puzzle to me that, 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 uh, that we keep going around in circles and we want to keep reinventing it, and, and yet we don't want to go back and look what, what, what was said uh, uh, 12 years ago. Um, I don't know how we bring all that to an end. I, you know, I speak with Jim Decker. You, you know, I have, I have unusual relationships with a lot of people in this community. I'm not afraid to tell Jim Decker exactly how I feel about things, and yet go back to him and speak with him with all the respect that he deserves as our lead, one of our lead agencies in this town. And I think Jim, Jim, um, has has a, 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 a lot to do with, uh, or his organization has a lot to do with, with uh, being able to drive some of this forward. But how do we pull everyone together and, and all aim for one thing? And that's the other thing that the Dante Ioni report pointed out was we have too many people trying to stick a feather in their cap, trying to do stuff on their own, and it's getting us nowhere when we needed one, what he, I think, described as a czar. And that's what I think a uh, uh, push to Mr. Hanna's buttons was that czar was not going to be the WCCBI or recommended to be the WCCBI based on the input he got from those round tables. But to me, everything that we do, we just keep going round and round in circles, and I'm, I'm certain what the city is up to will bring them right back to, to zero again, too, uh, after spending another $10,000. And I don't, I don't point a finger at anybody or any group, it's just something that's happening here in Warren County. And someone needs to step up to the plate here and drive this thing forward where we're all working together in one direction. And I don't see that happening. So, uh, just as a quick response, mm -hmm. um, uh, I have that report, I've read that report, um, and you're, I would agree with the, the general contents of your point. Uh, which is, uh, you know, I'm a firm believer in not reinventing the wheel or doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Mm -hmm. um, as has been stated in this meeting previously, um, I'm in the process of putting together a marketing branding strategy group uh, that would work uh, basically in conjunction or underneath the commissioner's office that would work on um, strategizing how to better market for tourism business, you know, the whole nine yards, Warren County. Um, I'm not a firm believer in branding per se, but I'm uh, committed to taking a different angle on it. The idea of the group would be to have a group of people that are leaders in the community, that are decision makers, that have a great deal of influence, um, that aren't fly-by-nighters or hobbyists, um, that will you know, take all of the various studies that have been done previously in their own uh, experience and utilize that in order to, you know, draft um, several projects that can be done that are, that will provide an immediate impact to the county. Um, so the idea being, and then be able to coordinate with the municipalities, coordinate with the county, coordinate with all the various governmental agencies in order to move those plans forward. Um, it would be the group's responsibility to determine what those projects are, to prioritize them, to function uh, somewhat autonomously from the commissioner's office, and um, you know, and then be responsible to kind of move those forward. Um, over the past few months, I've had meetings with a number of different people in the community in order to put that group together. We currently have the group. Um, I'd probably like to have one more person, but uh, right now it's at six, and and. Uh, Jim Decker is one of them, uh, so uh, the, that's probably going to get started up within the next month, I would think, um, as I coordinate with them and we put together what the parameters of the group are going to be. 
So, because basically I want them to have some authority, some gravity, you know, to, to function um, and at the same time be able to, you know, work collaboratively with each other and the, the community. I don't think that you can have a czar just because uh, I, don't, I think that the task that you're trying to undertake is too big for one person or one office. It has to be a, um, a collaborative effort. You know, and, and uh, I, I just think that what happens with a lot of these things, and I, I'd assume that you'd agree with me, is, is that um, you do get too many hands in the cookie jar, and it makes it really difficult. You know, you have a lot of entrenched interests, people that have siloed interests, things that they don't, you know, that they're afraid the funding is going to go away, or, you know, resources are going to be shifted. And we've got to sidestep that somehow in order to, you know, attack the problem, which is a, lo a lack of coordination countywide when it comes to, I mean, and, and you can't blame any one person because we're not a tourist community. I mean, this is an industrially developed community based on a history of industrialization, whether it's oil, timber, you know, manufacturing, you know, the whole nine yards. So turning them overnight into like the tourist capital, even though we've got a dam, the national forest, and a bunch of, you know, locales, I mean, it's not going to be an easy thing to do. There's a lot of people that don't want people here. I mean, you know, all that has to be evaluated as a part of that process. My, my personal goal is just to get a group together that's small enough and smart enough to kind of sidestep some of those landmines that, that we run into over and over again. I, I think you're right on point, Jeff, with a lot of that. I, I, I hope that we're not. Well, thank you, Dan. Yeah, I, but I hope, that, I hope that we're not. not, not I like that. Not you should come to more of our meetings. Well, that's the only compliment you're going to get. I know that. That's, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm sucking it up. I'm, I'm just uh, savoring it. I always throw one at Jeff. Exactly. I've known Jeff longer than, than just about anyone in the county here. So. But yeah, Jeff, I mean, I, I, I applaud the, you know, what you want to do. I, cer I certainly hope that we're not finding ourselves right back where we are again by simply creating another group. And, and, and uh, I, I don't know how much of that was covered in, in, in this report. I, I, I'd have to go back and look at specifically for that. But again, you hit on some of those things is that we have too many uh, people trying to do, to do good and, 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 and it ends up doing nothing. And, and, and uh, how, how we, how we uh, uh, put all that together so we're going in one direction. And, and I think the other thing too is that, that there is no magic bullet here. That Warren, I, I love my town, I love my county, I came back home because I love it so much. But we're, we're not gonna overnight turn into something. It's just not gonna happen here. And so perhaps we need to lower our expectations to some degree. But what I see is the little bit we can be doing. Uh, well, one of them was was just events, Jeff, and, and, and this gentleman spoke that we need to develop events. Take a look at how many events we've lost over the last few years due to groups falling apart or lack of, you know, whatever it was that, 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 uh, that happened. How about Ribfest? That was one of the first things I saw, Jeff, when I came home, out on the street of Warren, Pennsylvania Avenue out there. And I, I looked at that and I went, oh my God, this is beautiful. That they're doing the right thing. That this is what we need more of here. It was well attended. And then, of course, the excuse to move it out of downtown was because uh, the downtown was going to uh, have that streetscape project. Well, but Dan, you own a flower shop. You don't own an eatery. There are a lot of people that didn't like that downtown because of the fact that it took away from food business. I mean, and I, I agree with you. I love the event. I love Ripfest. I love but Jeff, it's a matter of but education. We've done these events in other big towns, but no one was out to these restaurants and talked. Why aren't they out there participating? Well, and you give them a low fee to do that at, or no fee at all. But if I were the owner of the plaza, instead of complaining about it, I'd be out there serving pie. Because it's the best damn pie anywhere around. And, and that's what it, it takes, is go back. It's what I do constantly in my position as president of Main Street is sitting down with uh, business owners and educating them as to why these things are important. And, and let me tell you, Liberty Rocks was one of our, our most, uh, 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 what will I say, most profitable events that we had downtown if it didn't rain. And, and uh, Liberty Rocks did nothing for my business. Mm -hmm. But what Liberty Rocks did was put a lot of money into the kitty to seed other, other events. Instead, as I go back, let me talk about Ripfest, please. 
is that we took it out of the downtown because of the, and then we had the excuse of now uh, there's no infrastructure to bring it back downtown. So it was uh, falling apart in the in the park, uh, in our uh, beautiful park on the uh, other side of town. And so what do they do? They move it out further out to the uh, uh, fairgrounds. And then it completely fell apart. And, and I just don't understand these decisions. And that was a primo event, prime, just beautiful, nothing wrong with it. And, and I can't speak, uh, I can speak to the fact that events are very difficult. And last year we sidelined Liberty Rocks because of the street. And uh, uh, there was another event that we sidelined too. And I, so I know how difficult they are. And I, I tried to speak to Jim Decker about them. And, and in fact, I'm having many conversations with him right now. And I will continue to uh, speak with him uh, uh, in hopes of bringing back these events. And he also spoke about bringing Brickfest back downtown. And uh, it uh, has a different location. But the point of it is, is Jeff, we just have, we're, we're getting nowhere. In fact, we're losing ground. And, and everyone, you can call me negative all you want to, but it doesn't help with what, what the truth is in these reports and everything else. And that's, that's I'm, I'm a firm believer in order to get anywhere, unless we're grounded in the facts, we're, we're just not going to get there. I, I'm going to be honest, Dan. I think that your compliment on me was very positive. I thought that was a very positive moment. I just want you to know that. Oh, thank you. Someone has fallen back. I've got a report sitting up in my office. Another one? There There's was, another one? That was broke. It was, it was Dr. Rice's. Uh -huh. He was kind of commissioner. Somehow I ended up with it. But he, uh, it was wrote in the, in the mid 60s of all the same things. See? It's 50 years old. Mm -hmm. you know, I'd love to see that. It's, and it talks about of this county not being able to afford five high schools. <laughs> and we still have five high schools 50 years later. And it's just, you know, it, it, it talks about the tourism that we should be, we should be at six million visitors a year. Six million visitors a year because of the King's Day. That's in the process of building. And you know, that's this thing, it's, it's huge. It shows the four lanes that go out of Warren to Titusville and to Corey and to Bradford. Uh, you know, the, the it, it is report. That a lot of it's the same did, thing. Did anybody leave a cell phone outside? Not me. No, there's some in the restaurant. In the, in the men's restaurant? Yeah. They don't visit you guys. It's just hold it here. I guess Sean Besties was in there. Before you expose your device to water. Yeah. I'll keep the water. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I'd love to see that report too. And, and the interesting thing is, in this report, Thanks. it breaks it down. He talks about the whole state of Pennsylvania and where we rank, and and so on and so forth. And and uh, uh, I just think that it's in interesting to look at, and perhaps we should lower our, our expectations. And in in the sense of, there's no magic bullet out there. We're not going to turn this place overnight into some mega tourism. And and uh, one of the one I want to bring up. We, uh, he talks about the conference center, which was, uh, you know, uh, to be in Warren, and uh, how uh, the consultant at that time, another consultant, not, had said that we weren't ready for prime time for a conference center, which is true. I've been in the conference center business all my life, and Warren is not ready to have a conference center uh, for many reasons. So what did the city want to do? They went out and hired yet another consultant to give them a yes answer. And this was a, a, all part of the Grow Warren scandal. And the thing what was, was they identified a grant out there to build a conference center with. But here they were trying, I, I thought, to plug, you know, a, put a, a round peg into a square hole. We don't want to force anything either. Even if there was large grant money out there, because you can see projects all over the country where something was forced, and it really was never meant to be, and there it sits there, deteriorating, and, and, and there's no money to put into it, and, and so on and so forth. Um, so there's a lot to discuss on all this, and, and again, I always approach it with a very uh, intelligent thought. People will say things to me, I go back home and think about it, and I think, well, you know, that's, you know there's something to that. And, and so the answers don't always come overnight either. 
and uh, I'm hoping that the county, in pursuing uh, uh, this in the future, will keep all those things in mind that I talked about. And uh, um, last but not least, before I go, I was distressed at last uh, week's headline with uh, the three county commissioners' picture. Uh, I have far too great of respect for all three of you. And again, I know Jeff, I hardly know Cindy here. And I only know Ben by the few times he's been in my store uh, prior to the election. And, and I know Jeff very well. With all the political animosity in this country, I expect the three of you to work together. Because I know you all to be intelligent, you all have something to contribute, and I would hope to never see that kind of thing in the newspaper again, because I just don't believe that this, it's where we want to be uh, with, with this county. I believe you three were elected on a mandate to replace uh, 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 what we had before, and in one other point to that, it seems in all the years there's been a county commissioner, we've always played the one man out thing. That one commissioner has always been excluded and, and sidelined. And I believe that to be wholly unfair. And whether it was Mr. Eggleston in the past, or Mr. Bauer, or whoever it was, I didn't like it one bit. All those gentlemen and ladies deserve full respect and to work together and, and to have complete input into everything. And I'm hoping that, uh, that, that that's uh, how, uh, how, how you uh, uh, continue in the future uh, uh, to be. Uh, working together. And uh, that was not meant to be a lecture. That comes from my heart. It, uh, it, you all three are excellent people, and I wish you well. And uh, if I can ever add anything to any of this, I'd be happy to do so. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate you. All right, anything further? I guess we can adjourn the meeting. Are you still awake, Ben? All right, bye. All right, bye. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, Dave. <laughs> I think I have a vehicle scheduled for tomorrow. I'm still waiting on confirmation whether I have our meeting or not. Because I sent an email. I'll see you for the morning. Um, yeah, because I know Mark was supposed to come down from Erie tomorrow, and we canceled that. Okay. We yeah. We're not taking any any chances. Yeah, I uh, I can't believe I haven't had a response yet. There's six people that are supposed to be meeting, and not one of them has responded. And you're going where? Oil City. So that's kind of right there on the edge of where yeah, everything's supposed to be. I mean, um, of course, I'm on, you know... Oh, Facebook, uh, Explore Venango, yeah. or Venango County Speaks, and it's all over about the winter weather. Yep. So. They would probably be better off to. And I'm going to wait a little bit. I, I'm pretty much decided I'm not going, but yeah, I want to see the yeah. 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 Yeah.